Welcome uh, to the local agency formation commission, May 15, 2024, 5 uh, Meeting call to order. Request uh, Mr. Knox uh, to provide instruction on in person and video conference protocols. Mr. Knox. Welcome to the Kern LAFCO September meeting. Last month we said goodbye to Maricopa City Council member John Crump. This month we welcome new commissioner and the mayor of Ridgecrest, Eric Bruin. Commissioner, welcome. You arrive at an interesting time with a proposed formation of a new district on the agenda tonight. A couple of notes regarding how this meeting is held both in person and by video conference. For our guests who are in the room, if you are representing a representative from an agency or hear from the general public and wish to speak on an item before the commission, we ask that you use the microphone at the podium, allow the chair to recognize you, provide your name and any affiliation and speak into the microphone. We're recording these proceedings and want to make sure you are heard both clearly in the room and online. For those attending by video conference, if you are from an agency or the public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your mic microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda. And please use the raise hand function to be recognized. Mr. Rice, as host, is in charge of the team's portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disruptive, Mr. Rice has the authority to remove them from teams. Thank you for, to everyone for working with us. Uh, please start the video, and I turn back to the chair to start the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon. Present. Commissioner Clark. Absent. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Bruin. Here. Commissioner Fowler. Here. Commissioner Arias? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Peters? Absent. Commissioner Zaragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, can you please stand for a pledge of allegiance? Our Commissioner Bruin will be leading us today. Sure. Please join me in honoring America. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Bruin. Moving on to item number three. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have a commissioner is attending video conference? No. Okay, thank you. Now moving on to item number four, approval of the minutes. Uh, do we have any public comment regarding the minutes from last meeting. Seeing none, uh, any commissioner comments or questions? Motion to approve, Couch. Second, second Fowler. Motion by uh, Commissioner Couch, second by Fowler. Roll call, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Bruin? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now, just let me clarify before we make public comment. Uh, the items for the Los Hills CSD formation will be item seven, so that has a uh, public comment. It's always in the agenda, and that's when you can speak for public comment. Just want to clarify that. So, uh, this portion of the meeting is re reserved for persons uh, desiring to address the commission on any matter on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody for public comment? No. Thank you. Moving on uh, to item number six, determination. Proceeding, we have none. Now we're moving on to notice of public hearings. 1821 uh, Los Hills Community Service District Formation and County Service Area 91 Dissolution. Um, Consider, consideration of the proposed formation of the Community Service District, California Government Code, Section 61000 uh, sequence, and then the dissolution of the County Service Area 91. The district will compromise approximately 226, 369 acres, consisting of residential, 379 parcels, 160 acres, commercial, 78 parcels, 354 acres, industrial, 
three, 33 parcels, 3,314 acres, agriculture, mi mining, and oil and gas use, 1,884 parcels, 197 and 225 acres. Other uses, 7, 796 parcels, 25,286 acres. The proposed area is generally located in the Northwest Kern County unincorporated community of Lost Hills and, surround, and surrounding area. As a lead agency of CEQA purposes, Kern LAFCO has finished a notice of exemption for commission's acceptance. If approved, this proposal is subject to the conditions recommended by the executive officer, um, Mr. Knox. Yes. To begin this presentation, I will start with some technical information. And with the chair's permission, I will then ask a, represent, a representative of the applicant to make a presentation and then come back with some rather unusual history and background of the, the park and this formation, and then I'll get into the conditions and recommendation at the end. I would like to note here at the beginning, for the purpose of this presentation, I'll be referencing the wonderful company, or wonderful. I'm using this term as an umbrella under which many business entities, privately owned by the Resnick family, grow, process, and market a variety of products and services. In addition to the businesses, wonderful funds and operate several foundations for the betterment of local communities. Wonderful was also previously known as Paramount until 2015, so that further complicates it. So to refer to each entity individually during this presentation would be confusing and counterproductive, so I'm just going to stick with Wonderful. Before you this evening, for your consideration, is the formation of the proposed Lost Hills Community Service District, or CSD. This process was initiated by petition. Petition was completed and found sufficient by county elections in January of 2023. The vast majority of proceedings that come before the commission are by resolution from a government agency. As the applicant is a local group backed by a private company, a resolution is not possible. In a Community Service District Principles Act, the portion of law authorized, authorizes how and what a district can do. A CSD has authorities or services granted similar to a city. Unlike a city, a special district is required to request from LAFCO which of these authorities are active and which ones are inactive. The applicant has requested authority to provide recreation and park services, street lights, street lighting, streetscape maintenance, and road improvements. All other services will, will remain inactive unless they come back to LAFCO for approval at a later date. The proposed annexation covers 226,369 acres divided into 3,170 parcels in the northwest corner of, of the county. The size area covered by the proposed boundary and number of parcels has changed since last September. For those of you who were not engaged last September, this formation was, re was ready for the commission to consider, but the applicant requested a continuance and later a withdrawal of the application for the purposes of redrawing the map to exclude areas and bring other properties into the proposed boundary. Can you put up the... Uh, the no, I'm looking for the green and, the park area. Green and yellow. Yeah. There we go. The original boundaries were the lime green area and the yellow area in the map. The yellow area has now been excluded. The lime green area stays and the dark green area has been added. Um, with this, there is a um, reduction in the number of, of acres, but a, an increase in the value of the properties. So there's, a, there's kind of a wash that happens there between the two. Um, and since the map was created, additional property owners have requested exclusion from the proposed boundary area. Copy the, copies of those letters are on your desk. As of last night, there were about 15 properties requesting exclusion. The law allows for the commission to modify an, the map to reduce the size of a, of a proposed boundary. If the commission wanted to increase the size, that would trigger a new CEQA review and a number of other steps that would likely require a resubmittal of the whole proceeding. The primary land use for the area are agricultural, natural resource extraction, residential, solid waste, and industrial. 
The proposed budget calls for a $1 million per year uh, in the first year, ramping up to approximately $1.2 million in, year, in the fifth year. Can you show the chart of the different? Um, the personal, the per person cost? Yeah. Yeah, that one. Oh, that's a bit hard to see. Oh, that's, that's much better. Okay. <laughs> Um, this, this is a list of uh, Rec and Park districts and the per, the, their budget versus the number of people they serve. And this would by far be the most expensive uh, district on a per person basis of any. There's a reason for that and the reason is the park itself is going to require significantly more maintenance than what is typically and, and services that what is typically provided on a county Rec and, uh, county rec and Park. Um, yeah, if this is approved, this will be the cost, highest cost of any Rec and Park district on a per person basis. In the county? In the county, yes. You really couldn't compare these to community service districts because they're providing water and sewer and completely different set of of um, services and so this is the most the closest we could come to show kind of an example of, of what it cost on a per, per, per person basis on the revenue and taxation side property owners will not see a property tax increase a portion of one percent of the property tax is set aside for special districts and will be used it for paying a portion of the proposed budget Property tax should not be confused with a special parcel tax. A special parcel tax will be placed upon the ballot with a proposed rate of $60 per residential parcel and $150 per non-residential parcel. Funding will also come from the, the County Enterprise Fund for, for the Lost Hills area. In addition, there will be fees for use of the facilities and programs. There are several steps before the formation of the district is finalized. If the commission does not approve, the proposed formation fails. If the formation is approved by the commission and the protest hearing succeeds, the, pro the proposed formation fails. And if the commission approves that the protest hearing fails, this will go to election by registered voters in November. There will be no change in zoning associated with this formation. It's consistent with general plan, regional transportation plans, or specific plans. There is no ag land conversion. Uh, it's, it is consistent with commission policies, except for the efficient delivery of services. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. The district does not overlap with any recreation and park districts. There is overlap with water and sanitation, sanitary districts, but those services will be inactive for the CSD. There is no change in water usage, and no additional development is uh, currently planned uh, by, the, by the district. The California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, was determined to require a notice of exemption as the formation will take over existing facilities and infrastructure and no construction or change of use is anticipated. A notice of, of exemption is justified. As this is a formation by petition of registered voters, there is not another agency involved to be the lead agency. Therefore, LAFCO is the lead. We have an indemnification agreement. Uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified, comments were provided, and included in the report and recommendation. The sphere of influence is proposed to be coterminous, that's LAFCO language meaning the same as the district boundary. There is no anticipation of future, future growth of the district to provide services outside the proposed boundary. At this point, I will turn the app to the applicant to make a presentation. Please come to the podium and provide your name and affiliation. My name is Yesenia Avila, and I am with the Lost Hills Community Advisory Board. My name is Rosario Velasquez. I am the president of the Community Advisory Board. We have their presentation. Great. I'm going to show it in the EDF, so I will be changing it. Okay. 
I didn't get the PowerPoint, so I'll just do the PDF. Excuse me, what was your, the first lady, what was your name? Not Rosario. Yes, Anya Avila. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us today. We are excited to be here representing Lost Hills. Like I mentioned before, my name is Yesenia Avila. I am the secretary of the Community Advisory Board. I am also a special education teacher, and I've been working and residing in Lost Hills for five years now. We are two of the CAB members who are present today. Um, you can go ahead. Um, we have four other members who couldn't be here, um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the CSD and why we um, strongly believe um, that it will transform our community. Again, thank you for having us. My name is Rosario Velasquez. I'm the president. I've been a resident of Lost Hills, and I was the main petitioner for this um, for the CSD. I've been a member of the Lost Hills community for the last 40 years, and I think it's time for us to have a change in our community. Lost Hills is a very small, unincorporated community. Um, we are right off the I-5 and Highway 46. We have about 2,000 residents. Um, we have been underrepresented for many years, so we're very determined to take the next steps in owning our future. In 2019, we got together and formed the Community Advisory Board, um, or CAB as you might hear us call it. So the purpose of CAB is to provide residents with a voice in projects and events happening in the community. We hold monthly meetings that are open to the public, but we also partner with local businesses like ERA and Chevron, um, as well as other um, our local elected officials. Um, so CAB has been instrumental in many projects that have been completed over the past couple of years in Lost Hills, um, but we are most proud of our commitment to building strong partnerships in our community. So we've been thinking about the formation of a CSD for a while and what it would really mean for our community. Um, over the last year, we've worked diligently in informing our community, seeking feedback. Um, what we found is that the formation of the CSD is widely supported by residents and um, employers. Um, we actually have collected over 200 signatures on the original petition formation. Um, so we strongly believe that the formation of the CSD would lead us on a positive path um, towards a self-governing model um, that not only Lost Hills residents want, but that they deserve. So what are we asking for exactly? So we're only proposing for four functions at this time. They're um, listed on the slide. So these just represent consolidation of services that are already being provided. Um, they would just help us give us a more coordinated um, effort in providing these services for our families. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let, let Charles speak a little bit more for what the CSD would do for Lost Hills. As Jacena has mentioned, obviously um, our proposed CSD will bring new life to, to Lost Hills, to our community and our surrounding areas. Um, by having a CSD, obviously we give our community a voice to be able to um, seek support from local and federal funding, um, obviously be, being able to raise their voice and be able to speak on behalf of the community's needs. Also, it would just, as a parent to me, it means a lot because I will have a central place for my children to be able to have a safe gathering place um, and be a part of all the services that we will provide uh, with the formation of the CSD. As you can see right here, um, Lost Hills, the proposed uh, boundaries is very similar to the uh, nearby uh, parks and recs. So as, as we said, we will be uh, pretty much providing the same um, services nearby districts are providing now, uh, limited in scope of to ensure the quality of service that we're going to provide our community. So um, we just want to mirror the services that are being um, uh, provided in other communities so that our, our community members don't have to travel, which I do right now because we don't have the services in our community. Um, as it was mentioned, um, we are we are looking at an estimated uh, one million funding for 2025 and 2026, and funding will be provided throughout a variety of sources uh, to, for the CSE.
And I really want to thank you guys for taking the time and giving us the opportunity to present to you guys. Um, I will now hand it over to Andy Anzaldo. Thank you, Chayo and Yesenia. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andy Anzaldo. I am actually the chief operating officer for the wonderful company's CSR. So all the work that you've heard about in the Central Valley, that's the work that I lead with Resnix and many other um, servants who have done the good work that I'm very proud of. Um, some of our most proudest work, and, and I've been actually with the company 25 years and started in Lost Hills, so it really, it may sound cheesy, but it is the heart and wonderful for our company. Um, and I couldn't be more proud of Lost Hills and the cab members for, for stepping up and wanting this leadership role uh, because Wonderful will not be in this community forever. Um, to date, Wonderful has, has invested over $580 million in the Central Valley alone in philanthropy. In Lost Hills, it's $90 million. Most of that went to a charter school, which is not part of this discussion today. But we did spend $30 million building a park and creating basic infrastructure for roads where kids were going to school in muddy conditions, building street lights to improve safety in the community. And so as a community, as we sat down and said, okay, how can we sustain this? The model that came to these young women right here and many others in the community was a CSD. And a CSD, as it was shown, a parks and recreation district is gonna be a major function but a big piece of this is to make sure the city has safe roads and it maintains the beautification that not only we've invested in, but the community's invested in. And it's something that brought pride to a community, frankly, that was forgotten. And so as we think about the sustainability of the, this work and the work of these young women that are gonna lead us to the future, we think a reasonable investment, and in this case, we're gonna be paying about 30% of the parcel tax. Uh, we'll be doing much more on top of that and make sure that this community thrives, but we also need the community to pay a reasonable fee so this community can live for generations. So thank you for hearing me and thanks for your consideration. To understand how and why a county park in a rural disadvantaged community is operated by a private agricultural company that now wants to turn the park over to a newly created special district, well, that takes some explaining and quite a bit of background. We've, we've heard a little bit of it just right here. There's also my personal involvement, uh, both personally and professionally, also adds to the story uh, with my commercial, uh, personal connection to the community and the work I performed previously to pr improve Lost Hills. My family owned and operated gypsum mining op operation just west of the community of Lost Hills for 80 years. Three generations of my family lived in the Lost Hills area at one time or another. Off and, I, off and on, I have been involved with various aspects of the family business, from being a 13-year-old pulling tumbleweeds in the summer heat, uh, to driving the water truck at age 15, to operating a semi at age 19. I managed my family's trucking company when I turned 24, and for a dozen years, I served on the board of directors of H.M. Holloway before the business was sold over a decade ago. So there is a personal interest here. There's also a history of the park. The story regarding the park takes a few turns along the way. The park was originally built after World War II on a corner of the airstrip, which was constructed as a flight training stop for Minter Field. Until 2011, the park was maintained and operated by the county. Approximately two decades ago, a group called the Lost Hills Community Advisory was formed. The group was made up of residents, representatives, uh, residents, representatives from interested companies such as Chevron, Southern California Edison, Paramount, which is now wonderful, the elementary school superintendent, and others, including myself, representing 4th District Supervisor Ray Watson in the county. The purpose of the committee was to identify issues in the community of Lost Hills in an attempt to find partners to help with possible solutions. Through, through a community outreach, outreach process, a number of issues were identified that local government and partners might have the ability, ability to address. One was Highway 46, which runs through the heart of Lost Hills 
it was dangerous to cross both in a vehicle and as a pedestrian as traffic came through there at 45 miles an hour unless I was driving a truck, which was probably more like 55 miles an hour. Um, so they, I, I understood why they needed some help there. Two, most of the Lost Hills community did not have paved roads or proper drainage. And three, the park facility was in disrepair. Highway 46, being a state highway, did not fall under the county's jurisdiction, but we were able to start a communications with Caltrans about possible improvements. A traffic light was installed at Highway 46 and Woodward Lost Hills Road not long after. Just recently, a pedestrian overpass was constructed with the help of the wonderful company. Paving the roads in Lost Hills was essentially my project. It took about two years to put together the money using community development block grant funding and USDA Rural uh, Communities grant funding. With funding in place, the county was able to purchase and build a sump, grade for drainage, and install paved, paved roads. It is at this point where Wonderful stepped into the picture. Wonderful has farming and processing fac facilities in the Lost Hills area and other regions of the valley. Over half the adult uh, residents of Lost Hills work for Wonderful directly or indirectly, and many of the elementary school children go to Wonderful Academy. To say they have a presence in Lost Hills is an understatement. A goal of Wonderful uh, was to help provide a better living environment for the employees, and that started small with a new roof and kitchen in the community center at the park. Next was an agreement for Wonderful to fund curbs, gutters, and sidewalks to many of the streets that were just paved. And at this point in the conversation, turned towards uh, doing more with the park. After determining a list of improvements for the park, then 4th District Supervisor Ray Watson put together three budgets. One for county initiated improvements, one if, one if Wonderful did the improvements, and one if the county and Wonderful shared the cost of the improvements. With county involvement, the costs were three times higher than if a private entity did the same work. In other words, it would cost fit, Wonderful 50% more to partner with the county than to oversee the park outright. Wonderful chose to um, the less expensive proposition and took over the park. The actual agreement to take over the park didn't happen until after Supervisor Watson's tenure on the Board of Supervisors, and Supervisor Couch signed the agreement during his first term. In those early discussions, Wonderful made it clear that this arrangement was not intended to be perpetual, and at some point, the park would, be, would no longer be Wonderful's responsibility. Roughly a decade ago, there was an agreement to reorganize the Lost Hills Utility District into a community service district with the intention of taking over the park from Wonderful. For reasons which changed depending on who you ask, the agreement fell apart and the application never made it to LAFCO. On and off since I started at LAFCO seven years ago, there have been informal discussions with Wonderful about how to address the park's feature, and roughly three years ago, these discussions became more serious. Wonderful proposed the formation of a CSD, I proposed several options, including reorganizing the, the utility district, as was originally planned, annexation of the Lost Hills area to another Rec and Park district, or creating a JPA between the county and Lost Hills utility district to maintain the park. I believe my arguments for not creating a new district were and continue to be valid. Regardless, I informed Wonderful, Wonderful's team that if a legitimate petition and complete application were submitted, I, as executive officer, am required to bring this to the commission for consideration. At that point, they informed me of their decision to request formation of a, county, of a community service district. I encouraged the, the consolidation of the street lighting services, which allows for the dissolution of CSA 91. There are streetscapes in Lost Hills that, are proposed, that the proposed district will maintain. While not expected to be an emphasis, the applicant also wants the ability to perform road improvements within the area. These services will also be, in, these services will all also be included in the formation. A community service district can provide a multitude of services, much like a city. For the purposes of this formation, the only, the only services being authorized by LAFCO at this time are rec and park services, street lighting, streetscapes, and street improvements. To keep the park at the current level of, of upkeep and recreational services will require additional funding than what, what a traditional property tax split with a special district would provide. To increase tax revenues, 
The proposal also calls for a special parcel tax. Each parcel in the district will be assessed an additional yearly tax. The tax is proposed to be assessed at $60 per, po per parcel for residential parcels and $150 for non-residential properties. If this formation is approved by the commission, the special parcel tax will be on the election ballot included with the formation and election of the board directors. And the report and recommendation is a list of conditions included a requirement for the formation does not happen if the tax does not pass or if quorum of the board is not elected. The budget proposed in the feasibility study calls for approximately $1 million for the first year with inflationary growth through the first five years to 1.2 million. The numbers used are based on budgets of other small park and rec districts and Waterfall's own expenses. I have and continue to take issue with these numbers. The cost of government agencies providing services is significantly higher than what a private entity can perform. As stated back when Supervisor Watson came up with a budget of triple the cost to upgrade the park with county involvement. Using numbers from other park and recreation districts that keep a much lower standard of care means that to provide a higher standard, this, the cost will go up exponentially. If formed, it takes some time before the property tax and special revenue, special tax revenue starts to kick in. To offset that, wonderful through the Resnick Foundation will fund the initial year's budget. This is a good start and very generous. In addition, the foundation has pledged to provide an additional $250,000 in each of the next four years. At the end of five years, the district will need to be self-sufficient. I believe the wonderful support will get the district through the first five years. After that, I believe the district will struggle to maintain the same level standard of upkeep and recreational services. At your desk was placed a group of letters from landowners and registered voters with uh, comments about the boundaries and the fairness of the parcel tax. There are arguments from property owners that say they are getting taxed for, for, for a park that brings them no benefit. I will disagree. A, a park provides athletics, events, family gatherings, gatherings, et cetera. And Lost Hills, a park is a centerpiece of the community. Having a park provides for the greater good. The question then is not whether the park provides a benefit, the question is whether the cost is appropriately distributed. The proposed boundaries are quite extensive. If approved, this will be the largest independent community service district in Kern County. The reason for the largeness is twofold. First, the primary services of the district are recreational park services. Recreational park districts traditionally take in a significant portion of outlying areas to provide services to citizens in more rural areas. Yet in this case, there are very few citizens within the boundary that are not in the community of Lost Hills. It makes sense from a service standpoint for the district boundaries to abut the boundaries of Westside Rec and Park District, Button Willow Rec and Park District, and Wasco Rec and Park District. Second, there is not enough assessed value of properties within the community of Lost Hills to begin to provide enough property tax to support the ongoing cost of the district. Residents and landowners, landowners in the area have shown on multiple occasions that they are financially conservative with a history of voting down taxes and increased fees. If the residents start seeing a level of service dropping, they're gonna to wanna to know why they are paying additional taxes. A vote to end the, the special parcel tax could end the district. Knowing this, the county has conditions and requirements that they have included in an MOU among these are the process of how a dissolution would affect the park property and transfer of remaining funds back to the county. That said, I am proposing that at the end of five, the first five years, a comprehensive municipal service review be completed with an emphasis on whether the district will be financially stable going forward and if there are opportunities for consolidation or reorganization at that time. In order to run a district, a solid board of directors is essential. Out of roughly 450 registered voters, there needs to be enough educated and committed citizens to fill the board of an elementary school district, Lost Hills Utility District, Lost Hills Water District, and the proposed Community Service District. There are a number of conditions uh, that we must name and put in the record. The name, of the, uh, water the name of the district shall be the Lost Hills Community Service District. 
If approved by the commission, a protest hearing of voters and landowners shall be held at the Recreation Center at Lost Hills Park at a date and time to be, determ to be determined. If approved by the commission and a protest hearing is unsuccessful, an election conducted by county elections will be held to answer three questions. Should the community, district, uh, community service district be formed? Will a special parcel tax be implemented? And who will the board members of the district be? If uh, uh, official language will be determined and approved by the county elections. If the first two questions do not pass or enough board members are not elected to create a quorum, the formation will be terminated. The board of directors of the district is to be comprised of five members elected as provided by California government code commencing with section 61,000. The dissolution of county service area 91 and transfer of street lights responsible Streetlight responsibility to the Lost Hills Community Service District will occur not more than one year after the rec recordation and formation of the CSD. CSA 91 will continue to operate as an active district if the formation of the district or any other uh, tax proposals do not pass by vote of the registered voters within the district boundaries. Pursuant to the application, Applicable government code section, the district is permitted to complete its duties and responsibilities outlined in the application. The powers of the proposed district are limited to park facilities, recreation programming, street and landscape maintenance, street lighting, and possible road maintenance. All other, all other community service district powers and authorities by the principal act are inactive unless the district requests Kern Lafco approve at a future date. The district will set the appropriation limits as soon as feasibly possible, consistent with government code section 57,000. The effective formation date of the district will be determined by the recordation of the certificate of completion by LAFCO executive officer with the Kern County Recorder's Office pursuant to the certificate, cert certification of the elections results by the Board of Supervisors. Upon approval of the voters of the formation of the district, approval of the special tax and the election of board directors, the Resnick Foundation will place into escrow an amount of $1,050,000 to cover the first year's cost of operating the district. In addition, the foundation will deposit a, into a second escrow account $1.25 million uh, to use by the district in the first five years following the first year of operation, limited to a maximum use of $250,000 for any of the single fiscal years plus any remaining funding from a prior fiscal year that has not been utilized. The district will provide a municipal service review in five years and provide a municipal service review update in five year intervals, according to government code section 56425G. The commission will make a determination of the adequacy of the district services, finances, efficiencies, and possible consolidation or reorganization. The newly elected board of directors will sign the most recent version of the memora memorandum of understanding between the County of Kern and Lost Hills Community Service District regarding the transfer of tax revenue. The County of Kern will transfer their portion of the Lost Hills Park property to the Lost Hills Community Service District as outlined in the memor me memorandum of understanding. Wonderful Lost Hill Development LLC will transfer the adjacent park property, a portion of APN number 58-132-20 and a portion of APN 058-132-15 to the Lost Hills Community Service District upon the formation of the date of the district. Wonderful Company LLC will donate equipment assets listed in Appendix A to the districts upon formation. The recommendation here is based on whether the proposed Proposal before the commission is sufficient for the startup of the district and provision of services over the first five years of operation. The applicant, as it currently is presented, meets those criteria. Therefore, my recommendation for approval. My recommendation does not consider the issues detailed in the report and recommendation. Being, one, the long-term financial viability of the district is a concern after wonderful stops subsidizing at the end of five years. The financial viability also relies heavily on property tax generated from petroleum extraction and agriculture, which are under attack. The proposed distribution of tax responsibility, where the biggest burden is placed on non-residential properties that will likely utilize 
the CSD services the least. And three, the ability to elect qualified board members will be difficult with such a small group of registered voters while, there, while other overlapping districts struggle to fill their board seats. I bring these issues forward for the commission to decide for yourselves whether these issues raise to the level of disapproval. The, the recommendation for the proposal is for approval of 1821 Lost Hills Community Service District formation, CSA 91 dissolution with a list of conditions in the report and recommendation. It is also recommended the commission approve 1822 Lost Hills Community District, Community Service District sphere of influence to be uh, coterminous with the district boundaries. And that is my report. <laughs> That's probably the longest one we, I've ever done. You may need some of that water. I do. Uh, Thank you. All right. We're going to be opening a public comment uh, on this item. Do we have anyone? Go ahead, go ahead and state your name and address for the record. Sure. Nandu Cantu, 512 Robertson Avenue, McFarland, California. Uh, I'm here uh, advocating for the CSD uh, as a former mayor of the city of McFarland. Um, and member of the COG committee as well. Um, I can tell you that a lot of things that are being shared are unfortunately systemic throughout the state. The oil, for example, all these other things are happening. But that doesn't mean our Hispanic communities can't survive or communities in general can't survive. Um, especially now that we see a lot of the funding coming from the federal government to support small communities, uh, small districts, small unincorporated uh, districts as well. Uh, with the, the changes in our economy and the changes in our environment. So I just have a few things here that I'll read right out. Uh, that way I don't waste, uh, spend too much time. Lost Hills is a growing Hispanic community as we are a growing uh, nationality, ethnic group in this state already. Uh, they have voted and it's definitely growing. You can see our census. Uh, they have voted to support an increase in uh, recent uh, county tax proposals because they want better services in spite of the fact that some of these services were not going to directly benefit them, and uh, for example, sheriffs. Um, now, new housing has gone up, new schools have gone up to support this, uh, this current growth. More housing has been proposed as well. Uh, there's an expanded highway for that purpose because we see that the communities and these areas are growing. Community and leadership development uh, for future stability. CAB members, and I was a CAB member as well, we went through uh, Kern County uh, leadership Academy, so these people are more than well prepared to take on these leadership leadership roles. For those of you who have ever been uh, on that uh, or have taken that training uh, with the, the current Leadership Academy, you know what they have to go through. Uh, so this community is committed to developing leaders for their future stability. Uh, county also created a zone of benefit led by um, Supervisor Couch, and we always appreciate his commitment to Lost Hills because he saw that there was a need. And the, the challenge within that zone of benefit was if there's no government there, then it's very difficult to be able to disperse funds there when you don't have a government there that's endorsing or promoting projects. Uh, so uh, we believe in his vision to continue to find ways to support, and the CSD is the best way to support using government funding or funding that these residents have taxed themselves for uh, for their own benefit. Number one, the CSD will also give residents a chance to create a stronger and self-sustaining future in their community for their families. And yes, it has to start with parks. It has to start with roads. And that's what they're willing to do. They're willing to put in the time, the energy, the investment to create their own local government to design and develop their own future and sustainability. Um, and this community and the district will be able to grow with grant funding. As the city of McFarland and my colleague uh, uh, understands, Mr. Ayon, it's difficult to grow with public or uh, local tax dollars. So you hire grant writers. And I believe that that is the best way to maximize your investment when you go out and you uh, apply for grants. And I know that this committee is committed to doing the same thing. We know that our tax base is limited, so we have to write grants. They'll be writing grants. Uh, and that would be what will help generate some of the additional supplemental funding to make this a prosperous uh, district and community for our Hispanic uh, residents here. Uh, and then finally, let the residents choose their future. They're here for a reason. They've invested time, money, 
They supported tax increments. They've, uh, they've been out in the streets because they want to build their own community. They want a better future for their children, their grandchildren, and they see the expansion that's going out there. They see the growth and potential business and economic opportunities out there as well with uh, a different um, um, vendors and, and national vendors, hopefully distribution centers out there as well. That section, as you can see, by uh, sales tax dollars is growing. That corner of I-5 is probably one of the fastest and most growing, uh, economically growing areas in, uh, and viable areas in Kern County, that intersection of 46 and I-5. So it's a growing community. Let these people develop their community their way for the future of their children. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else for public comment? Thank you for hearing me. My name is Ernest Anton Giovanni. And if I don't come across just perfect, remember I'm 87 years old. <laughs> Little history first. When I was, say, between five and 10, in the early 40s, summertime, we would drive through the little community of Lost Hills and a uh, beautiful little community. And uh, I got involved out there. I thought, well, to tell you the truth, being from near Bakersfield, which was the Gosford area today, I thought that was the end of the world. But anyway, in 62, a man hired me to find out who was stealing his water, who owned 6,000 acres just east of I-5 and 46 on the north side. Anyway, uh, I went to work on that for him, which was very simple. I think he knew who was taking the water. I'm not going to mention any names. And uh, he passed away in 60, 68. He was 86, and he left Stanford University. He didn't have any heirs. He left him $50 million, most of it oil production. And when the, when the price of oil went above 350 in 1974, it went to $13 here locally, and then in 78, it went to 27. So you can do the arithmetic to see what the gift really was. Anyway, getting back to, I got involved then uh, with one of these small oil companies before I had to get back in family farming in 86 or 85, I don't remember the exact year. And I got involved out at Lost Hills, and this water that we won in the water litigation, and one of the principles was Buena Vista Water Stories District, I would move that water from just north 46 up north of Twistleman because there was some good heavy black dirt up there. Boswell is my neighbor to the north. Uh, I think we call that entity King Kern Ranch. And uh, now let me get to the current wood we're here for this meeting. I want to commend the wonderful company. I don't see Rob here anyway or Mike, these people would know who I'm speaking of. And uh, I want to commend them on what they have done. Like I said, Lost Hills, the way it used to be, and then in about this, there was no farming out there until west of the river, until I think it was 68 when the aqueduct arrived there. That's when the farming started. That's when the demography of this community of Lost Hills began to change. And anyway, it evolved as we are today. And uh, I, our companies do not have an employee. 20 years, 30 years ago, we probably had 15 employees that lived in Lost Hills. Today, the eight to 10 employees we have all live in Shaft or Wasco. So I really get no benefit out of this. Anyway, uh, I want to commend the wonderful company or Paramount, whatever you want to call them. They have done a fantastic job in Lost Hills. That is great. But I do not believe that they should ask us other taxpayers now to pay for these things. And that's why I want to, that's the extent of my speech. I don't think we should be included paying these things. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, sir. Is uh, there any other public comment? There is a Ann Reynolds online. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Rosen.
Ms. Reynolds, can you hear us? Is there anyone else ready? There's no one else online other than this one. She's not in. So. Okay. Well, can She's all muted. Yeah. 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 Ms. Reynolds, can you hear us? I can. Oh. All right. If you can turn that up. Go ahead, Ms. Reynolds. We can hear we can hear you now if you'd like to provide your comments. Okay, I, my family are an old Bakersfield family, but my dad was in the oil field business, so we're pretty far plug these days. And my question is, how will you decide the assessment for non-residential properties? Would it be by acreage or house? Yes, I can, I can answer that. Uh, it's by parcel, and it doesn't matter how big or small the parcel is. It'll be a flat rate at $60 for non-residential property. No, for residential properties, 150 for non-residential properties. Did you have further comment? No, I was just curious about how much the taxes will be going up. I think it's great that um, Lost Hill wants to develop, and I wish you all the best on it. I don't like to see my taxes go up, but I can understand it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Is there anybody else on that's raising their hand? No one else. Okay. We'll be closing the public comment now. Um, moving on to commissioner comments or questions. Do we have any commissioner? We do. Commissioner Couch, go <clears throat> ahead. Thank you. Um, we have a packet here of letters from people in opposition. My question is, I think you alerted, didn't allude to it, you said it earlier. We have the ability to remove parcels in this action that we, we could take, <coughs> but we just can't add additional parcels at this point without starting over. Correct. Okay. We, we have a map of the parcels that have been, the, the property owners who have requested parcels be removed. Does that include Mr. Anton Giovanni's property? It does? Okay. Yes, it does. Okay. Oh, but I've already got your properties up here. That's your King Ranch properties, is that correct? Yeah, the one up on the north end. Yes. And then your Hugo Anton Giovanni Farms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And that's what, that should be all of them, is that correct? That's the only ones under those okay. two names and that's why they're putting that. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Couch. So the, uh, the question is, um, I know you have concerns about the, I guess, financial viability, the, st the sustainability of it. Removing those parcels, does that alter, does that alter your opinion? Probably, it doesn't enhance it, doesn't make it better, but is it still a viable? Removing those parcels will likely, will, will, li will likely lose about 6000 to seventy five hundred dollars a year out of a projected in, in, in property tax and parcel tax. Special tax. What, what special, was, I'm sorry. It's is that special combined? tax? What, what was the amount of the, the the in aggregate the total of that? So we're talking about a, mag, a magnitude of what? Well, out of out of a, a, million, a million dollars. Okay. Um, so, so, so the answer to your question is not it's not enough. It's negligible. It's negligible. Okay. Yes. I didn't. I couldn't exactly hear everything she said. Was her Ms. Ms. Reynolds? Was she requesting her properties be excluded as well, or did she say she just wanted information? No, she, she did not request it. exclusion. Okay. She was happy for it. Okay. So I would make a motion. Do we need to move on both of these, both A and B, at the same time, or just A? You can do either one. Okay. It's, it's easier to do them both. Okay. So I would move approval of your recommendation, which is to approve it, of A and B, excluding the properties that have uh, submitted Petition. or asked to be excluded. Okay. Is, is, that, is that enough? Is discussion or, on this? Oh, hold on. Yes. Okay. Need more than that. Hold on. Uh, uh, Commissioner Couch, I think other commissioners have. I understand. I just want to, that, that's the motion, but is that sufficient for a motion? Yes, clarity? it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Couch. Uh, Mr. Saragosa? Right. Um, one of our commissioners is not here. She'll be yeah. back shortly. So and I think Dar Mar uh, Barbara had probably a comment too. Um, this is not, <clears throat> questions I have are just more administrative. So I think overall um, the proposal appears to be well developed and um, those services are very much needed, I believe, especially dealing with uh, street improvements, which will help with pedestrian safety, as well as um, access for workers, especially at night, if there's street lights, et cetera, so great. Regarding the uh, recreational programming fees, Quick question, since it's the CSD population is predominantly low income, are these fees going to be affordable? It's a question to the cab. <laughs> yes, uh, I believe so. Can you, uh, excuse me, Mary, can you? I believe so. Uh, we have already started with some um, with some soccer leagues, and they're very affordable. I want to say better than any other parks and rec around our area. Good, good to hear. Um, administrative question on the CSA, or the, uh, excuse me, I don't have it, but on the current, uh, yeah. Commissioner Zaragoza, in their budget, it's they have $35,000 for fees. Right which would be in both recreational programming, use of facilities, those, those type of things. This is a rookie question because I think I know the answer to it. It's redundant, but on the CSA 19 current budget, funds that have not been expended, I think there is a discussion that once everything is up and running, those funds go back to the county. Is there any chance they would go to the CSD if it's approved? I believe I believe so. I, I believe when they transfer the lights, they transfer the fund as well. Good to hear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I will completely confirm that. <laughs> but yes, that's seems reasonable. I, I believe 
I've seen that situation before. So right. uh, another administrative question. Um, let me also answer that the streetlights have a defined area, and so there will be a separate um, fee for those who live in that area. Folks who do not live in that area will not be paying for those streetlights, mm. just the property owners in that specific area. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Um, obviously, the uh, um, since I've been on the board almost six years, five years, I forget, time flies. This is definitely the largest CSD formation request I've ever seen, and it's quite a bit of acreage, 226,000 plus. Um, so the question I have is, and I don't know if you have a map, but it would have been nice to have kind of seen a land use zoning map of those CSD parcels, predominantly those parcels that are residential, commercial, industrial, ag, mining, oil, and gas. Is there such a map? There is. Uh, I can check the municipal service review real fast and see if it's in there. Yeah. Thank you. You may be the only commissioner who understands what a general plan <laughs> map looks like. And another question, maybe this is for uh, our staff or our legal counsel, is I know for a fact um, in many cases, working for the county and the city, prevailing wages are normally triggered, in many cases, when there's improvements, in most cases, depending on the funding. Is that the same for CSD improvements? It's a question. Prevailing wage rates? Yes. Would, would, would Councillor agree? Yes. OK. All right. And the reason I'm asking is that, for those of you who don't know, that's one reason, perhaps, why the cost for services and maintenance is higher for <coughs> CSD or county or, or city because you're paying top rate for labor. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if you're just paying the regular rate, <laughs> you would save a lot of money. And uh, I see there's someone there raising their hand. Go ahead if you want to expound on that thought. Yeah, from, from my experience, man, you can too. That would be for projects that would, they would be adding new projects that they want to construct and build. But within their operating budget, there's no need for prevailing wages. They, they, they have that management uh, freedom to hire and fire as they choose with the salaries that they can afford. Uh, but if there are going to be projects, and yes, uh, most federal and, and state uh, projects require prevailing wages. In including grant projects, yeah, or grant, grant which, which you, were at, you were talking about earlier. State or federal government. Well, that is my list. I appreciate the response. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. Ms. Fowler, do you have any questions, comments? You assumed I did. Oh, well, I see the list. I'm next. First, so. I'd like to apologize for my coughing. There's a fire in Bakersfield, and I got a whiff of it, and it's been tough. Um, this kind of reminds me of the Taft Hospital District issue, does it not? Yes, it does. It's an enormous area to be brought into a community service district where some apparently feel that they were not perhaps informed of their opportunity to opt out where others were. And I don't know if you, and it's unfortunate we didn't see these before or they didn't come to you before, but I was interested in the letter we were given from the young person who's a sociology major um, who was asking for more information. What communication have you had with these people who have objected? Uh, quite a bit, actually. And the sociology major, actually her property is outside the boundary. Yes. So she's, she's not included. Okay. Um, when, whenever someone has asked for information, we provide it immediately. I've, I've, I've personally sent out maps and report and recommendations for at least a dozen people. And you've probably done twice that many. Oh, more than that. More than that. Mm -hmm. So we, we have been providing information as quickly as possible. So these protest letters we've received, were they uh, delivered to you in the appropriate time? Uh, they can deliver those all the way up until, until the time the vote. you vote. Okay. Um, so. So yeah, but they came to us after the the agenda packet was sent out. Okay. 
Gotcha. Otherwise, we would have included them in the packet. Okay, I assume so. Thank you. Um, so the county is offering for this, the first budget year about a half a million plus. So in the first budget year, it, there's a lag between the time the district's created and the funding starts rolling in from the county. And so the wonderful company is actually uh, providing a million dollars for the first year mm -hmm. to, keep, to get the district up and running. I understand By the that. second year, the, the tax revenues will start rolling in, and so it'll be based on those tax revenues. Okay. But the amount that the county is putting in is not necessarily based on the tax revenues. That's what they're allotting to this project. You want, you want to try this one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's several different funding mechanisms mm -hmm. that the county is utilizing. So uh, there's property tax, okay, uh, which will be coming in, uh, and that's what the executive officer was referring to was the property tax itself, which, which there's going to be delay in getting that to them. The, uh, the next one, which I believe you are speaking of, is the assessment, the special tax uh, that they're going to be voting on. No, I'm not. I'm just okay. saying um, can the community service district expect a half a million plus from the county in each budget year hereafter or if if that's dependent on the property taxes then the growing community with more housing and so on they'll the county will be getting more property taxes and the amount if that if they're one to one they'd be able to give the district more money is that correct yes as the property assessments are grow yes okay. the property tax would would uh, be directly affected I'm not asking it properly. Is the 545 million specifically related to property taxes? Thousand, thousand, uh, a thousand. Pardon me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, so property taxes can go up and down, mm -hmm. and I believe this is based on a percentage of the one 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 percent of property taxes set aside for special districts. The, the county then negotiates what percentage goes to each district. And so that percentage, let's say it's 10%, they'll get 10% of the property tax that comes in. Okay. If tax values go up, the district gets, gets more revenue. If, if tax revenues go down, property tax assessments go down, which I think is very likely with the state of oil and ag, especially on the west side, um, you might see a reduction in, in property tax available to this district. Okay, thank you. And then how is the Button Willow Recreation and Park District doing now? It's struggling a bit. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of conversation with them lately. Unfortunately, the person who was helping them, uh, Commissioner Clark, uh, isn't here tonight. Uh, he's been helping them for about the last five years but I think they're feeling an economic squeeze, are they not? Yes, they That'd are. Be accurate. So, so is West Side Rec and Park District. Right. Okay. Those are a couple of my concerns. Um, we don't have a date yet for the protest hearing. Uh, we, I believe the protest hearing will be the third Monday in June, which is the Monday before our Wednesday meeting. Okay. And we have it scheduled to be at the community center in Lost Hills. So okay. folks in Lost Either. Hills can can have a place to that's easy, easier easier to ac access. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. Is there Ms. Ms. Fowler? Is there any other commissioner questions or concerns? Seeing none. I got a couple questions uh, for the cab members. Uh, you're saying that if anybody could answer this. You're saying that you're elected by your peers. Are you guys, how do you selecting your members to this board? Yeah. Yes, and Yavila, um, everyone will go through an, electri an election process. Okay. And this is citywide or just, or is there, are they being appointed or is the election actually election? So. I can I can answer that. Okay, it's it's actually an election. So there's Perfect. there's okay. just like a city council. Um, yeah, you, you, you fill out the paperwork with the county. You you get nominated. You're you're on the ballot, 
And if there's five on the ballot, then all five of them get elected. If there's seven, the top five will get elected. Okay, perfect. I believe it's set up so that at, at two years, two years in, there'll be an election of a part of the board, and another two years will be another election. So not all of them are elected. Staggered. It's staggered. Okay. And then the second question is, now that some of these uh, landowners are potentially being removed with the motion, and you're uh, obviously w uh, wonderful is saying that they're going to be there for five years. Why is there a cap for five years in case some of this money is not coming in enough to sustain this, uh, this program? That's what they've... Just a question. Yeah, that, that, that's what... That's yeah. What, yeah, sure. <laughs> So I said earlier, we're not going to let Lost Hills fail. Yeah. And, and, and it's, but there will be a That's day good. Stuart and Linda are not going to live forever. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. but I, we have, as long as we're running this company with Stuart and Linda, we're going to be here financially to make sure. And there was a number we had to pick to start with. Perfect. And then, you know, if in the event, you know, it's our hope that they will be financially independent but if they're not they're either going to have to reduce services or we're going to have to put in another 250 or more so we're prepared to evaluate that after five years now okay can Thank i and, and part of the condition is that a municipal service review is done at, at five years knowing that you know the initial uh, commitment will have ended and what happens next okay so, sorry for interrupting no now that you're there, uh, it triggered a question I had earlier, which I completely forgot, was um, did you say earlier 30% of the parcel, or the special parcel non-residential tax is coming from your company, Wonderful, or 30% of the ag parcels are your parcel? I'm no, not no, sure 30% that... of the parcel tax is coming directly from Wonderful Parcels. Which are predominantly ag? Which are predominantly ag. And what are your predominant commodities that you are producing production-wise in that area? In that district, pistachios number one, almond, uh, pomegranates number two, and, and uh, almonds number and three. And you have sufficient water to go forward for the next five years? Yes. And labor? Yes. Oh, yeah. good to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andy. I would, uh, thank you for the answer. I was just trying to get a plug-in for McFarland in case... You know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I have a I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Couch. Uh, do I have a second for pr approval? Second by Commissioner Zaragoza. I have a motion by Commissioner Couch, and then second by uh, Commissioner Zaragoza. Now, Kirk, may I have a vote? Commissioner Ayon. Aye. Commissioner Couch. Yes. Commissioner Bruin. Yes. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Commissioner Arias. Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have to do a second vote for the 1822 or just is it the motion together? Thank you. Yes. Okay. That uh, moving on to item number eight, uh, commission, there's no commissioner items. Moving on to item number nine, general business, approval of monthly expense list 2404. Uh, any commissioner comments or questions? Motion to approve, Fowler. Do I have a second? A second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Couch. Do I have a uh, roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Bruin? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to. Item B, website request for proposal results. Uh, Mr. Knox. Yes, the idea of a LAFCO standalone website has been tossed around for years. For those who have not been around a while, you're probably wondering when it was finally come to fruition. Today is that day. The county has been very generous in allowing LAFCO free space on the county website for, year, for years. The good news is that it, it has been free. The bad news is very limited in what we could put on the site making it difficult for the public to find and garner information on LAFCO and the work that we do. A complaint we heard today. Um, staff developed a request for proposal and sent to six recommended website design companies. We received pro proposals for two. 
Request for information was received, was received from several others represented by the email between myself and BlackRock included in your packet. As far as the proposals, what we received was what we were expecting. One company, Streamline, meets all of the requirements at a significantly lower price than the other companies. Streamline specifically does websites for government agencies, including several LAFCOs around the state. This means that we do not have to create a new template for the website, which is one of the main reasons why the cost is reasonable. It's recommended uh, to sign a contract with Streamline for web design and upkeep. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding this uh, proposal? Seeing just, none. Just one new question. The ver the, uh, just to verify oh, the Hold on. I've got to close the public comment. I'm sorry. Yeah. Closing public comment now. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions? Mr. Saragosa, go ahead. Yeah. The budget again was? 8000 And their time to start and complete is how long? <laughs> <laughs> so their time to start and complete, we had a couple months set in there, uh, but they're actually going to be able to do it in like six weeks. From today? Is what they propose. No, once the contract is signed okay. once and the we get all is. the information to them. So yeah. by the end of summer, if everything works out? That's what we're hoping, yes. Okay, thank we, you for that. We are developing information now to put to put on the site. Uh, that's one of the uh, projects uh, Ms. Moore has taken on for us. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saragosa. Uh, Commissioner Fowler, you have a comment? Yes, I do. Um, Speaker. There we go. Um, I did look up their work on Santa Barbara County, Yolo County, and San Luis Obispo County. All beautiful pages, a lot of information. However, I was distressed on none of those sites could you get information about how to protest an annexation. I think that's incomplete work. So I, I will let them know that. Yeah, I think they need to fix that, and they need to do it in lay terms, not just quote Cortese Knox Hertzberg. It's not fair to the public to have to have a law degree like our counselor does in order to understand. <laughs> so that would be, I don't want to make it a demand, but it's a very firm request that our website have the information for the public so they can be actively involved if they choose to protest an annexation. Okay. okay. That can happen. So I already have the paperwork for that, and it is set aside. I have discussed that with uh, Streamline. Yes, I have. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fowler, for those comments and plugging in our council. Um, any other questions <laughs> or comments regarding this item? Move approval. Um, motion by Commissioner Couch. Second, Fowler. Second by Fowler. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Ruiz? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion pass. Went on to our item C, Stanley Springs, five-year SOI questionnaire update. It's a receive and file, Mr. Knox. I'm turning this over to Mr. Rice to give the presentation. No. And this is going to be very quick. Uh, what it is, Stallion Springs in September of uh, in, in September of 2018, we uh, authorized or received the five-year uh, questionnaire from Stallion Springs. Uh, since that time, I've been in contact with their new general manager, and I asked her about some of the questions uh, and the services that she had. She asked if she could re-present the services that they provide, that it wasn't a complete list, and that we put that on file and update our file. I told her that would be perfectly fine as long as the commission agreed. Perfect. So. Thank you, Mr. Rice. We have any questions, concerns for this receiving file? Seeing none. Motion. Motion you by. Have a motion to receive and file. Uh, no. 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 Yeah, um, just uh, the individuals that were here for um, Lost Hills, you don't have to stay if you don't choose to, but you're more than welcome to stay. So, uh, okay, moving on to executive officers, uh, miscellaneous item, uh, items. Mr. Knox, your report. See? Before you do that, can I oh. say thank you for being here? Unfortunately, you've got to, you're going to have to sit through a couple more years of underrepresentation until you get it. 
<laughs> Thank you. What's that, sir? Oh, no, I restarted it. Yeah. Mr. Knox, sorry for that interruption, but I figured we could clear the house. <laughs> That's all right. I really don't have much as far as executive officer miscellaneous items. Okay. Next week, next week I will be in Sacramento with uh, California Special District Association. It's their legislative days uh, talking to legislators about what they do and what they may be doing to us. So, right. <laughs> That would be better. I Doing see. nothing would be better. <laughs> uh, and our next meeting is June 19th. Um, we're not sure how many, if we're going to have proceedings or not. Bud's working on possibly getting some. Uh, but we will have the results of the protest hearing that have to be um, heard by the commission in order for, for us to move to... We, we then make a request to the Board of Supervisors, which then makes a request of elections um, to hold the election. And that has to be done by August something because that there's 80, you have to be before 88 days before the November election to have all your paperwork in for them to, to hold the election for this. And, they, and Wonderful has been pushing very hard to get this done they were hoping to have it done so it was on the, the, prim the primary ballot, but since we continued it, um, it, they didn't make it. So they're trying for the November. And now they're going to have to create new maps and legal descriptions for us um, very quickly before we can, we can move forward. Last time it took them several months to get it done, so this has to be much quicker. And they know that. Yes. I just wanted to add to something. Uh, we just came back from the CalAFCO staff conference. And while we were up there, uh, it, it was quite uh, eye-opening to find out that I spoke with multiple, multiple executive officers concerning applications and all and the processes that they use. And what I found is Kern County uh, processes probably more than most of the other counties. Now, and I'm just going to use L L.A. County as an example. When I spoke with their executive officer, he said they are looking at having 40 applications this year for all of 83 count or 83 cities, and then right around 20 districts, I believe. Uh, we only have 11 cities. We have 162 districts. We have 21 applications in process right now with another 16 awaiting that I'm talking to them. I've already issued the application forms. I'm just waiting for them to come back. The, you're going to be seeing all of these within the next three to four months. Uh, we're well on our way of having over the 40 for this year. So we, you're going to be busy. We're going to be busy. So I just want to let you know that the, the COVID that we've been putting up with for the last few years and the, the slowdown is starting to come back and we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff grow. Are Go ahead. Oh, absolutely not. Them guys work their tail off, but they also have almost 20 employees. So <laughs> we have th uh, three and a half. So <laughs> is there any questions or concerns for the for Mr. Knox? I think it's a topic I thought he was going to mention. It was mentioned last night. It's the pending relocation. The we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in closed session. Yeah. Oh, it's a cold session. I'm sorry. Didn't read okay. this. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, that ends our regular uh, meeting. We're going to. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't end the meeting. It's right. Open session. Open session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going on to closed session then. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yes, we're we convened to open session. Is there anything report report from our attorney? Uh, 
Uh, there's nothing to report out of closed session. Staff has given instruction. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Bruin. Second, McKibben. Motion by Bruin, second by McKibben. Roll call, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion pass. Meeting adjourned. Next meeting, June 19th.